Welcome to PartialArc.com. Don't do that. In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. And a lot of weird shit. Roll to seize! Welcome to Roll to Seas. This is episode 30. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and I'm joined by my co-host and Warhammer enthusiast, Andrew Dickinger. Hello, everyone. Man, things are changing. I feel like uh, I've started to get a draw to that chaos dust that you love so much, Andrew. I mean, it's glorious, glorious dust, Jay. Yeah, it feels like these days there's more and more chaos dust than ever. I mean, that totally has nothing to do with me. Wait, hold on a second. Andrew? Have you been getting more chaos dust from the CSPS? I don't deal chaos dust, Jay. How dare you? How dare you... Oh, do you want more? Do you want more chaos dust? I kind of want some more chaos dust. Oh, I mean, I can hook you up later. Wait, have you been hooking up the Harlequins with chaos dust? No comment. Oh, boy. <laughs> but seriously, though, I mean, there has been just this huge resurgence of chaos over the last month, and I mean, all attributed to the Traitor Legions. A quite remarkable thing has happened. Something Jay and I never thought would happen. Yeah. Uh, Jay and I are considering Ooh. starting chaos space marines it is a weird thing to say it's like guys i i think i'm gonna make a chaos space marines army i think one that's strictly undervalued right now is iron warriors ironically because most people are like ah they only get the six plus save and like i was like first i love obliterators as troops like the oblitz ob- oblitz are like my spirit animal <laughs> And, I mean, they just have... They're what I've always wanted in crisis suits and just never had. That makes so much sense. Obliterators are my spirit animal. Yeah, I mean, it's just like... You think about it, it's just like... They are what I always wanted in crisis suits. They can literally get all of the guns that I ever would want. They have better saves. They have invuls. And they're just fearless at all times. So it's just like, yeah, I just want that. And now that I can have them as troops, I'm like, man, am I considering Iron Warriors? I love, I love the Alpha Legion stuff. Oh, It's so cool. I mean, I feel like Alpha Legion is like the buddy that everybody loves. It's just like, man, that is just like the fluffiest thing ever. And I love it. It's probably awful to face against but uh, i mean just like you can't ever get warlord with that army that's the craziest thing we play itc where slay the warlord shows up on like five of the six missions and it's just like that one point get that that one point difference happens so much more often than you think i mean look for me from a person who's repeatedly on my season of the month talk about how i kill my warlord literally all the time or that we just talk about how we lose a game by one point because we're like oh we should have gotten line breaker or that one thing and it's just like just having that one point back is huge and the biggest part about it and a lot just like gene stealer cult like just so fluffy how that ties into those special yeah rules. we are alfarious yeah i mean if you haven't heard of it basically in a nutshell their warlord it just is like infinite meaning like you just name a character as the warlord and when he dies just any other character any other character not independent character yeah that's the biggest like, thing sergeant whatever can be the next warlord so you have to kill every character in their army or you don't don't get slay the warlord which means you basically have to table them which yeah. is just like absurd yes it and is. awesome yeah it's it's uh, it's such a cool thing and we could go on and on about the traitor legions there's a lot of stuff out there already about them but i think we should really quick call out which armies of the chaos space marines we're leaning towards okay so i like as all of you know i like underdogs and i also like the idea like i said my spirit animal i am definitely leaning towards iron warriors i want obliterators as troops want those oblitz and mutilators being useful that feels i don't know if i'll step over that line <laughs> I'm already going for it. I don't know. You made a list on this show that used banshees. I mean, I'm close enough. I mean, I'll, I will step towards things like maybe some of the like machines being melee, but uh, I don't know if I'm going to go mini- the mutilator out. I want Oblitz. I don't want mutilator. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> and for me, I actually am leaning towards, and this was, this was such a strange thing for me because I've never ever ever played an army it's, like this it's so outside the box for it, Jay. it's it's thousand sons and we've talked about thousand sons i think we had a whole segment on uh, we on did the show. we had a definitely a, a like a huge like list based thing around it just because in our opinion they have one of the most interesting backstories oh yeah and magnus has such an interesting backstory and i want to use those dope powers jay may or may not have bought the magnus model. i i bought the before magnus knowing model what his list before was before <laughs> confirming anything because i was just like i want that model i'll 
figure out how to use it. And it's just like, it's gorgeous and he's powerful as shit, but he's actually well costed. What? What? Insane. And, and people are like, oh, he should be 200 points less. And some people are like, he should be 100 points more. I was like, 650 points is a lot. It's a lot. I can tell you right now, list building with Magnus, I keep looking at my list. I'm like, why do I have so little? Oh, right. I have a 650 point model yeah. in this yeah, list. Yeah, I was helping him build lists and I'm just like, that is the elephant. I tried to build orc lists and I had a 710 point custom stompa and I was like, man, that really restricts things when it's literally a third of your ITC list. And it's Lord of War, so if it was like an HQ, I could fit like troops in there, but then I still have to fit another HQ and I got to fit other troops. It's just, it's just this whole thing. So I'm really enjoying it. I've never played a psychic heavy army just ever. I mean, I used to play some Eldar you, you stuff. You dabbled. I dabbled in you it. You dabbled and then you rolled lots of perils and lots of ones yep, yep, yep. on perils. And I then blew like... up spirit seers and wraith guard with double ones all the time. But like, this is the first time like really getting into just a super heavy psychic army and space marines, chaos space marines. It's it's exciting. Seeing this and seeing this condensed book, I could not be more excited for where the game is going. Ooh. And we'll give you guys an update on where we go with these and how we build out these lists. And if, if we do really fully step into that deep dark amazing chaotic pit that is chaos space marines uh, we're going into hell jay oh the yeah hell and back look well I'm, maybe not back but into hell <laughs> but, but definitely in <laughs> we'll talk next month about the imperial agents book because there's a lot to chew around that there's book. a lot going on with that book well here's the thing that book was made for imperial agents because you need like imperium like inquisitor level clearance like, to really decipher it like a codex decoder yes you do for that book because because you're like now does this replace previous codexes? Because something says that it doesn't, but then in other areas you're like, but do we have servo skulls anymore? I don't know. I don't really know. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that next month and have a more condensed opinion of what that is. But as of right now, exciting stuff with chaos and confusing and interesting stuff with Imperial Agents. But guys, this is where we're going to start talking about our seasons of the month, our favorite thing to discuss. Our, you mean because we play so well? We play... So well. So well that we have an entire segment about our biggest mistakes in a previous tournament from last month. So, uh, Jay, you go. Really? Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So this last month, I had the privilege of playing against some wonderful space wolves. They graced the tabletop and were poised to kicketh my ass. Um, <laughs> and it was it was a very, very fun game. Um, the list I got to play against was had a great mix of tactical and fluffy. Um, it had some iron priests in there with the dogs. It had some wolfen. It had uh, a bunch of dreadnoughts. I think Bjorn was in there. I'm pretty sure. He brought Bjorn? I, wow. I, I believe so, yeah. Kudos. There was, I, kudos. There's some fluff in there, right? Um, but you know, I was playing my typical Eldar list where I've got my striking scorpions, I've got my warp spiders, and I've also got my fire dragons coming in on a cloud strike. This is a list I'm really trying to work out all the kinks out of because I'm definitely going to be bringing it to LVO, and we look forward to seeing anybody there. Oh, absolutely. Come look for us. We'll be wearing shirts. Absolutely. But with this list, I was like ready to go. I'm like, okay, I've got this pretty well handled. It was Relic. So with my striking scorpions, I can infiltrate them pretty much right where the relic is when the game starts. And his uh, his iron warriors, like his priest and his wolfen were on the table. Wolfen, obviously, super difficult to kill. I was feeling pretty good about the game, though. I've got fire dragons so they can double out wolfen. I wasn't feeling too bad about the dreadnoughts, just because fire dragons as well. Uh, they blow up vehicles pretty handily. I have killed four knights, four imperial knights in one turn from my fire dragon uh units. yeah i'm sure that player was real happy oh so very happy i mean he knew it was coming but that doesn't make him any happier about it but with this particular situation i might have gotten a little bit too cocky with my striking scorpions now i know that sounds crazy but i do love the striking scorpions and people often underestimate them because they do pretty well in close combat well as the game was going on, like I said, my striking scorpions infiltrated into the center. They managed to grab the relic, and one unit of scorpions was just scooting back. Scooting back to the back edge so I could get it far, far away from his wolfen, that one iron priest, some a bunch of other things. Regardless, I was pulling them back, right? Mm -hmm. I had another striking scorpion unit coming up to, to help him out. Now, one thing I had forgotten is that he had some iron priests and a bunch of little wolves in uh, ready to outflank. So they were sitting on the sidelines, ready to come in, and instead of my striking scorpions pulling that relic directly back into a more center position, I was scooting them off to the side. Scooting them off to the far, far right side. So you went right along a table edge. Far right along a table edge, and uh, not really thinking about it. And I was like, ah, yeah, I'm just going to bring them back here, and everything's going to be totally fine. Well, 
those iron priests and a shit ton of wolves outflanked right to that side with my striking scorpions. And there I've got two striking scorpion units, just five and five, so ten total with two exarchs against this iron priest, basically this Death Star. It was a bunch of them with like, I believe like thunder hammers or power fists, whatever. It was like strength ten murder frenzy with a bunch of wolves that were going to absorb hits. Yeah. And I was like, oh no, this is this is looking pretty bad. Now, this is really where the seas comes into play. Not only did I forget that these guys were going to outflank and just kick the shit out of me on the side of the table, I instead, like I mentioned before, I got cocky. And I was like, guys, I think my striking scorpions can handle these iron priests. They totally got this. So I sent, I left the relic out, and I charged my two striking scorpion units wait, in. Wait, wait. Go on. You had control of the relic. Yep, yep, yep. And you abandoned I it. I abandoned the relic. <laughs> It charged both units in. Now, I could have used one Striking Scorpion unit as a screen while the other Striking Scorpion unit just, With you know, the relic in a runs? Yeah, just, you know, hustled away with that relic. And uh, then he would have had to charge and hit my other Striking Scorpions while the other one was pulling it away. And it, I believe this was like almost fifth or sixth turn. So the game was about to end. So I was pretty much guaranteed the win with this. But instead... JJ, what is the primary mission? I believe the primary mission is relic. Now... <laughs> Andrew has brought this up to me multiple times, and I think this has come up on the show before. I have a problem with a with a late game bloodlust. It's amazing that you don't like corn because you I know right. You just like feed that god like every time you, you know play what? the game. I think I'm afraid that I would like it too much. Andrew. <laughs> I think it would be one of those things where I go deep and then I just never come out of that hole. <laughs> it's just oh, blood for the blood god forever. But I, I try to restrict myself. That's why I play with Eldar. So you send these two guys in, and they do the best. They do really poorly. Uh, it turns out uh, Iron Priests are pretty durable, uh, especially if they've got a bunch of ablative wounds on those wolves. And even though I've got Strength 6, AP 2, that's not doubling out Iron Priests. And they've got a bunch of Strength 10, Strength 8 attacks that just obliterating Striking Scorpions left or right. Now, I did get lucky. I think I had maybe one or two left that managed to pass a morale check because I did do some damage to the wolves, so it evened out a little bit because I had Manda Blasters and Strength 6 AP2, but still, that unit ended up getting wiped, but I got really, really, really lucky that they didn't completely wipe it out charge up on their turn, grab the relic, and win the game. So, guys, you don't want to be gambling with those kind of choices because that could have gone really wrong really fast, and I had a really easy opportunity to protect that relic, but I got a little blood crazy, and I decided to charge in. So, hey, blood crazy? No. <laughs> so my season of the month is keep a lookout for outflankers, and when you have the guaranteed safety primary, net, primary, primary objective, when you literally have it in your hands, don't do something crazy don't, like I don't did. Don't get butterfingers yeah. and, and fumble. Yeah. So, intentionally? <laughs> intentionally. With a bloodlust. But guys, that was my C's of the month. Andrew, what was your C's? So as many of you know who listen to our show regularly, I've been polishing out a Gene Stealer cult list mm. to bring to LVO because I've been waiting so many years for Gene Stealer cult. For Gene Stealers. To be a thing again and not a Fandex. <laughs> I'm loving the army. I haven't played a real close combat focused army in a while. And I love the fact that they're paper essentially, because then it's not like I'm using something with like rerollable three plus invul saves. And nope. I just like feel like a piece of shit using it. <laughs> not to, and you know, say that you're all piece of shits that use that stuff, but you know what I mean when you go <laughs> against people who use those and you're just like, man, I just shot that thing like 30 times and it didn't lose a single wound. I don't think anyone that's doing that is like, what do you mean? This is totally, I yeah. mean, you've shot everything in your entire army at five guys and no one's died but i feel like this is fair yeah i mean like i know players who are like top tier players in itc and they acknowledge that they're jerks for using it <laughs> but it's a you know it's I a mean, it's, it's it's a thing it's a it, dog eat dog world out it there. is i mean it is not the bark bark star not, not the bark bark star <laughs> i mean that's literally that's a, literally dog eat dog, dog. Eat dog world <laughs> but i mean look it, you know death stars are a thing and they are a tactic Good luck to any of you Death Star players at LVO. I mean, we will give you scowls, uh, but no, I'm just kidding. We love you guys. But yeah, so I'm I'm perfecting my uh, Gene Stealer cult list. Now, it's the one that I'm going to be bringing is adjusted slightly, and it will be using the bane of my existence, which is flying hive Oh, goodness. It now, will... <laughs> do you believe you're jinxing yourself by bringing these guys into the list? No, because I think it counterbalances itself, because it's like what I ran into with my last C's mm -hmm. with being like 
too stupid with the Gene Stiller call, <laughs> like evens out with me knowing something. Having more. an extra stupid layer yeah, on top so of it. It's the double stupid. Two negatives make a positive. That's basically. right. Ooh. I mean, it works in math. It's Andrew, literal math. Listen, it can't get much worse with the Hive Tyrants. So I feel like you dig deep enough, you come out on the other side. That's right. I mean, it, there's got to be a bottom somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. Um. So yeah. So I. That will be my my final list. But this list was final. Like you, you will afterwards. You will never play any more lists ever again because you will never be able to recover i mean probably yeah fair enough <laughs> um but this was just pure gene stealers and i was going against an army that i actually haven't played or had a lot of experience with in a long mm. time which was a horde imperial guard list oh cool now i'm the <laughs> comes down to like this is horde imperial guard shooting imperial guard it is a hammer and anvil deployment which means long ways ah so it's like Close combat armies love hammer and anvil. Now, Colt Ambush can get around that. True. Because I can just deploy in his face and assault. I made one big mistake. I thought that he had this banner that just gave him a 12-inch bubble of Fearless to all of his guys. And I was like, I've got this made. Because as soon as my guys get in, they're just going to clear a swath. And then his guys will be Fearless and I'll be stuck. And then they'll clear the rest. And then my turn, they charge the next group. Yeah, it's just like lawnmower style. You're just like... Yeah, it's just, just slowly like, cutting through the army. There's the first layer of hedges and the second layer of hedges. I didn't realize that he had to plant the banner ah. in order to give that fearless and i at first turned and i'm like this is golden i got three units with sixes and i'm just gonna go in and then second turn all my gene stealers are gonna go in and it's gonna be glorious well turns out that you know you need to plant that thing yeah and one of my best units which are the hybrid metamorphs they're these guys that have an option of taking either a claw which makes them strength six fucking awesome pretty nice um whips which makes them initiative seven also great or they can take an extra claw which gives them like a mastercrafted you probably will never see that i had my strength six guys because the way i was running this was two units with the strength six claws Mm -hmm. and one unit with whips is just to try it out see which i liked better type of thing and the unit that i decided to go like right into the thick of it was the one with the guy that gave me the three rolls you know like my what it's called a primus yep and they wiped out the unit that they were fighting because he deployed in layers like he should. This sounds like a wonderful story. And then they immediately got blown away. Because because, they were out in the open. Because I have no cover and they have five plus saves and toughness three. So, yeah. Uh, So, basically, all of my front line got obliterated and I was just like, shit, how do I recover from this? Ironically, I didn't lose the game. And the MVP ended up being a Scout Sentinel. Oh, my God. That's right. You told me about that. Because turns out Imperial Guard guys that are fearless have no way to deal with Scout Sentinels when they're in close combat. Scout Sentinels are just in there kicking people in the face. So, I mean, it killed like two guys maybe hey. out of four rounds of combat. Fair enough. But, I mean, it kept that entire unit locked, which <laughs> means I believe this was also Relic, which meant that I could just have my entire 20-man blob of Steelers ironically not ever get into combat the entire tournament i took the first curse formation and they literally never hit combat well they are the first curse they were cursing you they i mean the entire this game. is why i think the flyerants will balance it out yeah you're it's right like curse on curse because they're they can't decide they're like oh which one of us is gonna dick him over maybe Double you curse. maybe you they can't decide yeah don't think you know an army when you haven't played it in a while yeah. and then have plenty of times to ask about a rule and then never do it even if it's just one rule like and, hey those guys are all fearless, right? Yeah. No? Oh, this is a bad idea. Oh, no, it's a banner. You have to plant it. Literally, like, that. Uh, 10 seconds. Yeah. It's not like you have to explain a formation and how it works. It's literally one piece of war gear, and it's like, oh, no, he has to plant it. They're not fearless yet. Okay. Fair enough. I think that's, like, what I said last month when I was talking about those exalted flamers, where all I needed to ask was, was like, those guys can move in fire, right? And you'd be like, no. And I'd be like, ah, my entire game plan it, has changed. Yeah, I mean, like, it's, ah, I mean, like, that is just what happens when you play an army that you don't quite know yet, and you're really excited, and then you also just act like an idiot and don't ask and the rules of your And you also play opponent. an army that you also don't quite know as well. But, I mean, it's like, I've known it enough from just diving into it that, like, I knew exactly the piece of war gear that he was talking about and that it was, like, banners in Age of Sigmar where they always have to be planted to use their effect. And, like, Imperial Guard still uses that mechanic of just, like, we gotta plant the flag type of thing. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows that a flag is worth nothing if it's just in the air, but as soon as it touches dirt, ooh, that thing is golden. It's gotta be planted, man. It's gotta make landfall. I mean, you never see cool flags just waving in the air. You see them, like, stuck in the ground with people, like, 
holding them and posing. But thankfully, you know, the, as with your game, you, there was some slight forgiveness, and yep. we didn't just auto lose. But yeah, that was that was my season. Turns out as well as I found out in the last game, those strength six metamorph guys are the bee's knees. They are pretty nice. And you know what? I think what's really happening is we're using up all our luck now. So when we get to LVO, we just, <laughs> just go get z- obliterated. Just zero six yeah. the entire way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll be the ones, if you're looking for us, I mean, we'll be wearing the t-shirts, but we'll be the guys on the side who are just crying into our Screaming, armies. drinking lots of alcohol. I mean, who knows? Maybe by then we'll be deep into chaos, so we'll be loving it. Yeah. Oh, man. We'll be like, man, those, uh, the fuck this army. Those chaos are looking great right yeah. now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Screw these Eldar gene stealers. <laughs> you know what? LVO is going to be the thing that really pushes us over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know what? We're going full tilt. Chaos all the way. Well, guys, those were our seasons of the month, and that'll take us into the brown library well here we are in the brown library kind of nestled in ready to uh crack open one of these fine tomes and see what we've got yeah, a bit chilly in here not sure why they've I, i've never seen a temperature regulator yeah, is there air conditioning in the brown library i really don't want to know how they pipe air into i've this never place. seen a thermostat in here that is a good point Wait, how do they regulate temperature? Do you I, think it's individual temperature? Do you, do you, do you want to know? <gasps> Maybe it's psychic temperature. Like, I really think about it being this one temperature. Let me see if I can make it colder by just thinking. <sighs> Jay, Jay you're, you're, not a, you're not a psyker. Oh, yeah, nothing's happening. It, it looks more like you're about to go to the bathroom. Yeah, I do need to take a break in a few minutes. Not here. Oh, right. Fair enough. But you know what? Let's talk about an interesting army in one of these books. So this was actually a hard nut to crack because there's a lot of things that I wanted to try and make work for this specific time of the year. But then I decided, you know what? I want to just dive into something that I enjoy specifically. Whoa, that- whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you're not allowed to do that. Oh, okay. So that's the end of this episode. All right, everybody. everybody. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> oh, wait. You know what? You allow it? I'll allow it. Just this once? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So basically, there's kind of an army that everybody's sort of forgotten about for the most part. I think people were expecting Imperial agents to sort of round them out, and it then kind of didn't. And that's Adeptus Mechanicus. Like, Mm. have you heard anything about that army since, like, those rumors that they were going to get flyers and stuff? Yeah, it's so crazy. Like, a year ago, there was, like, ooh, there was, like, I think a picture surfaced of being, like, new formations, and a book is coming. And then it was, like, no, we were just kidding. That's not happening. Yeah, like, the talk of them getting a flying transport of some kind and another robot that was smaller, but it turns out that was actually just, like... Uh, Forge World stuff. See, this was all Inquisition misdirection. Oh, that's right. Or maybe it's in the Imperial Agents book. You just need that decoder to figure it out. Uh, Is it like secretly the Grey Knights are actually Adeptus Mechanicus? (laughs) Yes. But I do have Adeptus Mechanicus. You know, I say that the only army that I can really play is Gene Stealer Cult. But it's true. You do have a whole Mechanicus army. I do have a decent amount of a Mechanicus stuff, but it's never been rounded enough. Like I have, I'm just going to like say it's all Admech because I have Skatari. I have Admech. It should all just be Admech. That was really weird, them splitting it up. Yeah. Now, there's one unit in Admech I've literally never seen anyone play but myself. Are you talking about them big old robots? No, I've seen people play the robots, oh, actually. Oh, okay. Originally, that was a unit that I didn't like the design aesthetic for. Like, it was very 50s-esque robot style, and there was a lot of, like, what I'd call long fang players, the vet players, the older guys, that were like, fuck yeah, this is awesome. They're really going stylistic towards the classic 40K. Yeah. And they grew on me over time. I was oh, my like, God. Yeah. It's so funny to think that all of 30K is like the 1950s. Yes. <laughs> it's just like... Do you not realize that... that that custody's car looks like a 50s car it it's does. like art deco but style that's so amazing to think that the entire entire universe is just like the 50s yeah it's like it's like a ton of it is art it's like deco. the darkest version of leave it to beaver wow that wow that went a weird route <laughs> anyway anyways guys but there's a unit that i mean they're just i i love calling them this thing they're fucking rasputins wait what it's the Corpuscari and Fulgurite Electro Priests. Oh my god, focus- I know exactly what you're talking about. So we're focusing on them. Specifically, I love the, the Corpuscari more than the Fulgurite because they have the range attacks and they're silly. But if you've seen the Hellboy movie, they literally look like Rasputin in the Hellboy That's movie. It's true. They all are rocking those like arm gauntlet things. They have these enormous generators. Like there's no way they stand up straight with those. Oh, absolutely. Things. I mean, they're jacked, but like that thing sticks like three, four feet off their back. They don't skip back day, basically. 
Every day is back day or like, for them. Or like leg day at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's all lower body those guys are working out. And like out. lower back because they would like, their spines would, I guess they're fake spines. I guess they have, you know, mechanica yeah. spines. So they're actually probably okay. Yeah, they're probably fine. But yeah, they literally focus this ideology that's based on what they call the motive force. Mm. So their entire idea is that there's no real separation between machine and man because we all essentially run on electricity. I mean, not wrong. I mean, no, because the body generates electricity. That's uh, We have electrical impulses that control our nerves. And we and can all like shoot lightning if we truly believe it, just like everybody knows. I mean, of course. It's yeah. the 41st millennium. Who can't shoot lightning? Yeah, it, it's very surprising if you can't. I mean, there are some people, but, you know, I just don't think they're working at it hard enough. Yeah, I mean, they're just quitters. Yeah. Just we don't quitters. need to go into how you can shoot lightning because it's pretty common for everyone, but uh, we'll move on. But, yeah, so you have these two different sects, and I think they're really interesting. You have the Corpuscari and the Fulgurite. They both believe believe that they should collect all of the motive force you know and just collect energy pretty like much like they they collect any type of energy like they're all about capacitors they're all about taking what this motive energy and storing it because they think it's being abused in the galaxy they're going through like a uh, garbage cans looking for old duracell batteries just like ah, who would throw this out well the Fulg- fulgurites take it a step further oh wait what and they literally have stabs that rip the motive energy out of things oh god including living things of the vein of we should take the motive force and then spread it destructively to everyone we run into i think these guys are pretty fair they take some and they're like you know what we're not using this to its full extent we should give it back to their faces so they're a lot of it all at once yeah so they're like giving the good word which is the good word is lightning and destructive power oh you want lightning here you go you know what maybe they're for you they're oprahs they're space oprahs they're like (laughs) lightning for you and for you and look under your seat more lightning it's so weird we keep giving lightning to people and we never get any high fives they just seem to lay on the ground they never seem to care jay (laughs) maybe they just care too much like why doesn't anybody else with this lightning as much as we do like the thank the emperor i'm getting electrocuted right now where Whereas Fulgurite do the opposite. They see that as like blasphemy and they're like, how dare you spread the word of the motive force? So they do the opposite where they just steal as much as they can and then hoard it. They're like hoarders of motive force. See, that's not cool. I think a lot of people prefer to get hit with lightning than have lightning kept from them. I mean, stolen life energy from them versus getting shot in the face with lightning. Not sure what the better choice (laughs) is. I don't think any outcome is positive, Uh, but uh, unless you're talking about positive energy. And negative. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But you have this cool duality going on, and they actually have some really interesting rules. For one thing, they're zealots, so you never have to worry about them running away. That is nice. Um, They also have the Corpus Gari, at least, have essentially the Necron Tesla rule. Mm. So any hits in range and close combat, six is a generate additional two hits because it's arcing electrical. That is very nice. It's good to see that Necron Lightning works the same as uh, Cole Mechanica's Lightning. Yeah. Now, granted, uh, they do have Feel No Pain. Fat, a lot of use it is because they're toughness three, so uh, majority weapon in the game, they don't get to use it, but they do at least have five plus invul saves. Like, that's pretty cool. That is pretty nice. It's cool that they have zealots. Works well, especially with a Corpus Gar, you know, if sixes generate additional hits, then with zealot in the first round of combat, you get to re-roll your hits, so then I mean, it also works hits. from a fluffy standpoint, too. They're they're zealous people. They're oh, like, yeah. I mean, ah, bring you the lightning you or cannot, take your lightning. You cannot break their belief in that electricity for everyone or no one mentality. Yeah. If only they could get on the same page. Maybe Maybe they would gather together and be like, you know what? Some lightning, but not too much lightning for everybody. Now, their uh, their weakness, of course, like any other cult mechanicus thing. D-weapons, of course. That was not where I was going. I Stomp? Mean, n- no. Okay. Six-inch movement. Ah, uh, <laughs> the classic enemy. The only the ability to not have transports. Right. Even though you build them, weird, or have... Uh, I mean, I feel like they as well, because they're charged with electricity, would have like a, a 9 to 12-inch movement. Yeah. Like, or at least a choice to do something like that. Something neat like that. Um, But they can't. The difference between the two is that, you know, you have the givers and the hoarders. The givers have range attacks, so they can essentially spit lightning bolters out at 12-inch range. It's Ooh. a two-shot tw- twin-length strength four shot That's that nice. on sixes generates additional hits. That can get out of hand really quickly. Oh, absolutely. Uh, especially against light infantry. Great for going against those. And then in combat, they are also getting the additional attack and the sixes generate additional hits. And like, I mean, it, that's awesome. The Fulgrite, on the other hand, they don't have a ranged weapon, but if they successfully kill a unit in close combat 
like wipe a unit out mm-hmm. with that unit, their five plus invulnerable becomes a three plus invulnerable. Ooh. Or the rest of the game. Oh my god. Not they, even just like for a turn. No, because they stole the energy out of them. So they're like, mine now. Better shields. Wow. Um, the one thing that's interesting as well is that what's called their Voltageist field. That's the thing that gives them their five plus invul save. Voltgeist field. That's very cool. Uh, it also counts them as having assault grenades. Oh, so, nice. So they actually, even though they're only initiative three, they won't strike at initiative one in close combat, which is a benefit to any time you're going against Power Fist and stuff oh, like that. Oh, absolutely. And also interesting is that even though they're single wound models with three toughness, these were sort of like one of the first wave of infantry being moved to 32 millimeter bases as opposed mm. to 28 millimeter bases. So they're on their thicker, you know, what I assume all Space Marines will eventually be on. They take a really wide stance when they're running. I mean, their legs are spread apart pretty far, Jay. Yeah, it must be that all that electricity they don't want to get it too close so diving into the fluff a little bit one thing that's cool is that it's got the dumbest name ever in games workshop i mean this is a bit of a fail boat oh i can't wait but they have tattoos that are literally like the circuits like they inject like circuitry material into their skin and everything so oh. that they can focus the motive force better now it burns out their eyeballs that's why they're all blindfolded wow their eyeballs literally liquefy so literally each one of them knows this is gonna happen they're like you know what i'm still down with that motive force let's burn these eyeballs out baby yeah i mean i guess i guess so that it seems like it sucks but. here's here's the upside this is the grim dark universe do you really want to see everything that's going on point there we go but the tattoos are called electus i'm sorry what they're called electus electus <laughs> drop the ball a little bit there oh my god yeah come on guys Electus? It's pretty bad. Now, as well, as I said, the Corpus Gari, they are strength four uh, range. They are also strength four in close combat, which is always nice. Indeed. Um, the Fulgrite are a little stronger. They're strength five in close combat. And AP4 doesn't matter as often as you'd hope it would. Right. But where these guys can actually get crazy, mm. where they can actually, like, suddenly be a problem. They can elect to Boogaloo? Did you just try to loop in electric Boogaloo? I would never do that what moving on (laughs) but really where these guys can actually suddenly be a terror is with this little rule that mechanicus have called the canicles of the omnissiah Mm. so if you don't know the army that well because you haven't seen it that often because they're not as popular as you'd think they were a lot of it has to do with their flexibility they just don't have enough variants there to be i think like as popular space marines or something and even when you play them sometimes you might not exactly know what's going on i know sometimes i've played cult mechanicus and they're like well i did a thing and now this has this and this does that and they're shrouded and they're not and i'm like uh i believe you because i have no idea what just happened well yeah it steps over the line definitely when you get into the war convocation which was the white dwarf formation that allow you basically have to take like one of everything yeah pretty much and then they you get all the things they share all the rules and they get all free war gear and you're just like i've got no fucking clue what's happening nope. here but the canicles are, are essentially a, an army-wide special rule that to everything that has canicles which everything has it so i don't know why they would differentiate maybe in the event that like a vehicle wouldn't have canicles sure but this is essentially like the motive force at its heart Ooh. so it's the more of them there are the more powerful these canicles are so it's like the more kinetic energy the more it builds up across the oh, army. and potential energy because it's stored energy as well that's so, true because it can act defensively or offensively and essentially it's a special rule that you can select at the beginning of your turn and it applies to the entire army to everyone that has canicles of the omnissiah so this thing can be things as you mentioned like shrouded or something like reroll shooting or reroll hits in close combat and you know they have varying degrees depending on how many u- units you have like maybe it's only reroll ones in close combat then it's reroll ones and twos then it's reroll everything and i believe it's you have to have seven or more essentially to get the max bonus oh okay but these are especially useful when you think about these guys is like think about the corpus gari the guys that get the you know on sixes they get additional hits and stuff like that mm-hmm. think about it when suddenly they're strength seven Ooh, because you give them plus three to strength that's pretty good and then suddenly they're exploding strength seven e. and you're like oh that's uh he's winning on twos against my entire unit that's a problem that's not good i don't want to do that and i've used these guys and had them go into combat against something like bikes or like a wolf bomb or that's true where t5 getting a two plus on t5 is huge and they are expensive they're 18 points a model which is a lot true but 
when you think about them all everything adding together now once again they would have benefited from t4 but <laughs> when you think about everything else that they're getting getting a stock basically demon save and maybe getting extra bonuses but then getting like even something as simple as getting that plus three strength suddenly like even things like knights have to worry that's true and because you're like you realize wait all of those sixes to hit cause additional hits and then they just need sixes in combat and they're hurting a knight and you're like uh shit just a bunch of strong lightning punches yeah because you think about it like them if they have two attacks apiece they have three on the charge Mm. they're getting additional hits from sixes and in the first round of close combat they're re-rolling all their misses yeah so it's just like suddenly when a unit of 10 is rolling 35 plus attacks and just trying to get sixes against a knight and you're just like oh that's problematic yeah and then you know on the fulgurite they're even strength eight so then like suddenly you send them again against things and mm-hmm. you're like remember all they have to do is kill a unit once and then suddenly they have three plus invul saves which is so amazing and when you have just an 18 point unit with a three plus invul that's fearless and you're just like oh then knights aren't that scary yeah i mean it's just like they they could give a shit i mean like a, a couple good saves especially the fall rate if they kill something and then go into combat with the knight plus invul jeez you just it, uh, provided they he's not rolling sixes for stomps like you could just uh, tank that thing basically for three turns straight and oh absolutely like, oh. so where this list focus there's actually a formation for both fulgurites and corpus gari oh it's called the- is it called the sharks and the jets no <laughs> i kind of wish it was called that now because <laughs> then they could have like when you're a full great you're a full great for life <laughs> <laughs> Went too far, Jay. Too you don't far. think they snap their fingers and electricity shoots off as they walk down the streets? Of course, that's how they make electricity is snapping their fingers. Andrew, that's why their legs are so far apart. They're dancing. They're just about to do a split. You know, it every makes, single time. It makes sense now that you say it. And it really doesn't, but <laughs> I, I want to imagine I it that way. I cannot imagine these two guys running around. I, I can't, I honestly, the image of them snapping downfield and causing electrical sparks oh just sounds gosh. great. Wow. Uh, but there's a formation called the Numinous Conclave. Mm. And what this does is essentially... Uh, the Numinous Conclave or the Conclave? Conclave. Ah, gotcha. Numinous Conclave. Fair enough. Uh, you have to take an equal amount of Corpus Gari as Fulgurite, meaning oh. if it's like two or three of each. So if you take two Corpus Gari units, you have to take two Fulgurite units, uh, three and three. Can't favor um, one over the other. You cannot. Gotta treat your kids the same. Because they are competing. They are literally competing. One gives it away, one takes the motive force away. Wow. But what's cool with it, now, it's more just because then you can get this cool formation. It just gives them added bonuses, and it gives you a ton of priests versus the limited elite slot that you can take. Right. So this formation, what's cool about it is it not only gives them Crusader, which if you don't know what Crusader is, you roll two dice and pick the higher for running, so it gives them a little additional speed. They need that extra movement. Um, Because it does matter when you can only move six inches. Yay! Um, But it also has what's uh, these two rules that are... Uh, really interesting and play super fluffy with these two units the first rule is called the corpus gari giveth and what this is is uh, it, i see where we're going here yes so models in this unit that are within six inches of a unit of fulgurite electro police because they play off of each other get to re-roll ones when they're making the shooting attacks so that's pretty cool like mm. it, them being close to it, it like they are sort of stealing energy from the fulgurites uh. and then using it against the enemy and then enemies that suffer one or more unsaved wounds from the electrified shooting attacks are then electrified until the end of the assault phase. Oh, that's pretty cool. This leads into the next section, which of course is called the Fulgurite Taketh, mm, which course. means that they get to reroll wounds against the things that they're fighting that are electrified. Because they're getting they're all getting all jazzed up about that electrified unit. They're, they're like, like, ooh, I want I want some of that electricity. Like, you motherfucker, you stole my electricity. I'm gonna take it back from them now because they have it and I'm gonna take theirs in the process. I love that the one unit is just trolling the other unit. They're like, I got your electricity, now I'm throwing it over there. I'm like, oh, I gotta go all the way over there and kill these Eldar and get this goddamn lightning back. But the cool thing about it is that, you know, the Crusader obviously helping them out, I wish I gave them Fleet or something like that as well. But anyways, <laughs> like, it's it's super fluffy that it essentially is forcing the ranged units to get the, the close combat units into combat more vigorously. It's kind of like they're leapfrogging, chaining each other yes. across the battlefield. They're literally causing, they're chain lightninging each other across the That's field. so cool from a fluffy perspective. That's really, really neat. Super interesting. Now, obviously, this has to get rounded out because these guys, other than with the canicles, can't really deal with vehicles that often. I True. mean, a plus three to strength helps, and if you take something different than what I took, then you could use that ability twice mm-hmm. in a single game, which is interesting. Instead, I got a key in some robots. I mean, the robots are my 
Jam. Throw those Castellan robots in there. Um, so what is attached to this is my favorite thing to run with Admech, which is the Cohort Cybernetica. The unkillable Death Star machine. There's nothing more fun than throwing a four minimum toughness seven monsters creatures, two guys with two plus saves, and another guy with a two plus save, all with invuls of different kinds into a single unit. Oh, and uh, six is reflect shots back. If anyone remembers the episode where I talked about them bouncing back and blowing up a bunch of falcons, that happened to oh, me. there's nothing more enjoyable than, you know, reflecting, what are those, the Karn battle tanks and watching it fire last cannon shot at you, I only to reflect back. I'd never seen it happen before until I played them, and they totally killed my tank, so <laughs> I forever fear castle and robots and their dumb reflecting shots. And then you give them one piece of war gear, and then suddenly they all have it will not die, and they're oh. all feel no pain and it's just like ah oh, i just love it pretty durable just walk them up the field hey if it's a relic game you know exactly where they're going now so i did something a little different with that unit only three of the robots have the phosphor now oh. the reason i did this is because they all have actually fairly decent ranged weapons even the data smiths they have a strength 6 ap2 armor bane gun like yeah that's pretty good that's not bad the fourth robot however i take stock Stock means with the two power fists and the torrent regular flamer. Why is this useful? One, because the flamer is actually useful for Overwatch. It's also useful for things like Gene Stealer Cult. Uh huh. Very important for things like that. Flamers destroy Gene Stealer Cult. I never thought I'd fear flamers harder than I when I started playing Gene Stealer Cult. And holy god, a single regular flamer can cause so much destruction. Oh my god, yes. Uh, Scathic Wraith Knights is going to be an interesting thing at LVO. Yeah, it'll be very interesting. I will need that first turn six so I can charge it and insta kill it. You're like, please let it be the first curse. Please let it be the first oh, curse. Oh god, if it's the first curse and he doesn't wall off his Gathic Wraith Knight, it's gonna be Christmas. Woo. But yeah, so this guy also adds something else to the unit, which I never really thought about, but is super important, because if they get charged in combat, they're not slouches. I mean, the Dominus has an axe, a power axe, you know, strength uh, 6 AP2 or strength 5 AP2, still good. Yeah. Both the Data Smiths have strength 8 power fists, also good. Amazing. Remember, all this can go to strength 10 if you give them the, the plus 3 strength and everything. And all the robots are strength 6 monsters creatures. Like, they're not bad at oh, all. Oh, yeah, definitely not. But suddenly you have one guy with fist remaining and he's strength 10 at all times, and he's the way to deal with, like, specifically a reasonable Death Star going into them. Oh, Anything yeah. that's T5 that may tank all of the rest of them for a while because you don't want to use the plus 3 strength or something, or can't because you already have, suddenly he's just going in there and doubling everybody and out. And just super punching everyone in the face. Um, Yeah, because, I mean, like, he'll have, like, 4 tax base and, like, they're wrecking machines. Nice. So this army is the Cohort Cybernetica and the... Uh, Numinous Conclave. And nice. It's, and it's the bringers of the motive force. Ah, uh, I love it. Or just, you know, the motive force. Or, you know, jets and the sharks, right? Jets and, uh, you know, we're just going to call it the sharks and the jets. <laughs> the sharks and the jets. That is now the name that you have, you have superseded. <laughs> what I've, no one's going to know what that means at face value. No one's going to know. They'll be like, why is this called the sharks and the jets? But it's, it's great. You would also need to know West Side Story. But Well, you know why? That's playing back to the 50s, which is what 30K was all Which about. you think apparently like all of the 50s, 60s, and 70s is rolled into one thing. But... Yeah, see, they saw that and they were like, we're going to base an entire entire group it, of units off of this it was forty thousand years ago jay so i will give you a little bit of there you answer. go see <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well that was episode 30 of roll to seas we'll be posting new episodes of this segment every last wednesday of the month with new episodes of dark heresy the first and second wednesday and 40k arena every third wednesday if you'd like to download more episodes or check out other similar podcasts, head over to partialarc.com. You can email us any questions at rolldeceas at gmail.com or chat with us on dacadaca.com and help decide the next Brown Library segment. Search for fluffy slash underrated units in the 40k general discussion forums. Of course, you can always follow us on Twitter and Instagram for tournament and model picks at partialarc. Thanks for listening, and your fun fact for this month is... It's kind of weird. Like, they can still see, but like people electricity they see through the motive force but like wouldn't haywire mess them up probably right but it like doesn't i think that's a fluff part that was missed that they should be vulnerable shouldn't they be doing haywire to things maybe that would be awesome oh god if they could do haywire suddenly that unit's really oh good oh my god all their shots and all their punches are haywire holy crap that would be brutal yeah.